The WHO's chief, Chedros Ghebreyesus, has called for speedy international negotiations to come up with a treaty that would assist countries deal with pandemics. Ministers from the UN member states are supposed to begin the negotiations at the end of November. Here's CGTN's Wanja Mugai with the details. Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus was speaking at the World Health Organization's annual ministerial assembly in Geneva, Switzerland. He described the idea for a treaty on pandemic preparedness and response as one whose time has come as the world grapples with the coronavirus pandemic. The safety of the world's people cannot rely solely on the goodwill of governments. Every government is responsible for and accountable to its own people. But member states can only truly keep their own people safe if they are accountable to each other at the global level. The WHO boss says the COVID-19 pandemic continues to pose a major challenge. He has called for sustainable and flexible funding to deal with such challenges. We need a generational commitment that outlives budgetary cycles, election cycles and media cycles that creates an overarching framework for connecting the political, financial and technical mechanisms needed for strengthening global health security. The Pandemic Preparedness and Response Treaty will not be the first one. In 2003, the WHO settled for the first ever treaty, the WHO's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, after four years of negotiations. Thank you. Before I the delegate over, ministers from the United Nations 194 member states are set to meet on 29th of November to commence the treaty talks. Wanja Mongai, CGTN. Well, let's stay on that topic. We're now joined by Dr. Bharat Pankanya, senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School in Bath in the UK. Dr. Bharat, thank you so much for joining us. Doctor, how would you rate the WHO's handling of the coronavirus pandemic? It's always easy to look back and say could have done better. Uh, the, uh, the WHO is the best that we have. Of course, they can do things better. So I reflect and think about the time it took for them to move from uh, a emergency to declaring it a pandemic. And it took them a long time. And my reflection is that the decision making process at the WHO is very committee based, very multi layered structural. And as a result, it is not a very dynamic and nimble organization in the event of a serious, urgent emergency. And I'm not asking for a replacement to the WHO or anything. I'm asking for it to be more independent of member states. It's uh, people who make up the WHO decision-making body shouldn't be afraid to make hard, fast, tough decisions, even if it puts them in a difficult position with the country that they are representing. They need to be independent of the country that they represent on the WHO committees. Doctor, just looking back, as you say, when you look back, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. they say, but when you look back, do you think the WHO has the capacity to handle future crises and pandemics of this magnitude of what we've had with COVID-19? And if they don't, what do you think they could do to make them better prepared for future crises? So I don't think the WHO has the capacity because its funding is very precarious. And we noticed that in the middle of the pandemic, although the funding continued, President Trump you, you know, just announced out of the blue, uh, I'm no longer a member of WHO. So we need a better, more robust, a better funded WHO, a WHO that works collaboratively with all the other large organizations like Centers for Disease Control America, the ECDC, European Centers for Disease Control for European Union, and similar large organizations, all working in unison. But we really need better structures, better decision making, and a much greater funding for such an organization. At the moment, the funding is not good enough.
Thank you so much for that, Dr. Pakanya, Dr. Bharat Pakanya. He is senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School in the UK.